Joggins Fossil Center. Overlooking Nova Scotia's Bay of Funding, it stands atop one of the world's most important coal age fossil sites. A 16 kilometer stretch of coast that tells the incredible story of how animal life first moved onto land 300 million years ago. But the center has a story too. It's the story of two communities coming together to realize a dream. Some jobs, some projects just evolve into something much bigger than you ever dreamed they might. Joggins is one of those. What astounds me today is the number of people who come here. They come for the cliffs, yet they see the building and they are inspired by the building itself. Although Joggins is world famous for its fossils, it was coal that first brought people here. But the coal industry is fading, and with it, the village. For its future, Joggins turned to its past, the fossils. They were, simply, the best of their kind in the world. A record of generations upon generations of life that lived 350 million years ago the same time that the world's coal beds were laid down. So the village resolved to build a world-class facility to attract more visitors to Joggins. They feel positive about themselves, they feel the future is bright, the community actually believes in itself once again, that it, what they have is significant and that they have a future on which to build. A center about the power of the cliffs, but also, they decided, about power itself. Joggins was built on fossil fuels. Now, it would take a lead in the quest for renewable energy. That's when they met one of the partners at a Halifax architecture firm. John Crace shows up in his smart car, you know, and had just been to the beach, so his hair was a little wild, and, and he, he was just lit up. It was a fascinating project. You know, one of those small but mighty kinds of projects. The building itself is not large, but the significance was huge. Uh, they knew that they had something of universal value. They had a story that needed to be told to the world and they, they wanted to do it properly. They really wanted to be a part of this project. They wanted this. It definitely got something in us. Together, they conceived of a building that would evoke the power of the cliffs. Uh, there's so much meaning and so much resonance on the site, it's sort of rich to be, to be mined as, as a significance and to be communicated through the building. Its exterior lines inspired by the layers of strata, its curved interior walls by the swirls of geological history, and its overall angles, an homage to the coal mine that once stood on this very spot. So many people said, oh, that's the mine, that's the mine, you know, they got it right away. But a building doesn't succeed on form alone. It must also function. The building had to be as striking on the inside as it was out, take you right down onto the beach and back in time. The center also houses the Joggins Fossil Institute, created to both study and protect the fossils. Here, space for scientists and geologists to do their work. There are also facilities and meeting rooms for the public, a true focal point for the community of Joggins. I didn't never wanted to have this state-of-the-art center stuck down at the end of the road that anybody in the community felt uncomfortable walking in the doors. We want to host them, invite them feel warm and comfortable in their community building. And underlying it all, a driving desire for a building that needed less. So that we can actually do something that will slow down the sort of climate change that is now occurring. It made sense. It couldn't be ignored. Less water because of low flow toilets and fixtures. Less power for lights because of the massive windows. Less power for heat because the entire display side of the building could be sealed off. Much of the power the building would need, up to 60%, would come from an array of solar panels and a wind turbine right on site. The building would also do less damage to the local ecosystem because of its living roof. Covered in grass and soil, it would be home to plants and birds and insects. In the long run, these technologies and design techniques would make the building less costly to operate. Woo! 
for the center here, uh, we had more than a thousand people from the local area and on our opening day on April 22nd, which was Earth Day, and people had tears in their eyes when we opened the doors um, because I think they, they believe that the lifeblood of the community rests in the center and that uh, it will act as a catalyst for growth. Three months after the building opened in the spring of 2008, edification for their hard work, the United Nations inscribed the Joggins Fossil Cliffs on the list of World Heritage Sites. Very exciting, the World Heritage Committee inscribing the site unanimously, and also the fact that they noted the significant level of community engagement, again, also a model worldwide, which says a lot about the people of Joggins and the community. I think it's great now that the center's built that, you know, 98% of our staff are local people so they can actually stay at home and work and have a reasonable lifestyle. We're harnessing as much as we can the, the, the renewable energy of the wind and the sun. Generally these are things that we're all moving towards as architects, so I think, you know, in a way we've, uh, this has given us a chance to have a head start. So I think we're, we're really much more advanced than we would have been without this opportunity. I strongly believe that the impact of the center and the World Heritage designation, I mean, we have an influx of visitors right now, but I won't see in my lifetime the results of, as a community, of what we've done.